What's up, Witcher fans? It's Strangelove here, and welcome to an episode of Witcher 3 Cribs! Whoa, hey, I'm just kidding, you guys. I won't be getting that obnoxious for this video, but I will be giving you a grand tour of Corvo Bianco Vineyard, which is Geralt's new home in The Witcher 3, thanks to the Blood and Wine expansion. And since I just finished restoring my Corvo Bianco to its former glory, I'm gonna be going over all of the upgrades that you can do to the vineyard so that you guys know what to expect before shelling out the coins, because it is quite expensive. I also apparently forgot to equip some pants. I seem to be between trousers at the moment. But you know what? This is Geralt's house, and who doesn't like to walk around their house in their underwear once in a while? Am I right? Okay, so first things first. If you're playing the expansion and you have not yet received your vineyard, all you have to do is play through the main story quest for Blood and Wine, and eventually the Duchess will hand you a deed and a new set of keys to your very own vineyard called Corvo Bianco. It's sort of the Duchess's strange interpretation of the Law of Surprise, but it's also kind of cool for Geralt to have his own place to call home. Now once you're given the deed to the vineyard, you'll receive a quest called No Place Like Home. Travel back to Corvo Bianco and look for an NPC named Major Domo. His name is actually Barnabas Basil Fawlty, which is a nice little nod to Fawlty Towers for those of you who watch British sitcoms. Anyway, Major Domo is basically the steward of your estate, and he sees to all the upgrades and renovations that you want to make, assuming you have enough money to afford them. After the initial tour, Major Domo will stand at the back wall of the main building, so whenever you're ready to make renovations, all you have to do is talk to him, and he'll explain the types of upgrades that you can make. Now, the renovations are separated depending on whether you want to upgrade the inside of Corvo Bianco's main building or if you want to renovate the outer grounds. Before, you can do any of the inside upgrades like getting a new bed or a new guest room, all that good stuff, you're going to have to do the general renovation first, and this costs 5,000 coins, which could be quite a lot depending on if you've spent your money on Witcher gear or something like that. Now the same thing sort of goes for the outside because you have to buy a grindstone and an armor table before you can do any of the other upgrades like get a horse stable or grow a garden, but the grindstone and armor table are significantly cheaper, they're only a thousand crowns apiece, and they only take 24 hours to arrive. After you fork over the cash for the general renovation, you'll have to wait three days for it to be completed. You can meditate to pass the time, but if you meditate for one day in between those three days, you'll see all of the little workers working hard to renovate your estate and make it pretty, which I thought was a nice little touch. Anyway, once the general renovations are complete, you'll notice that the outside of Corvo Bianco is a little bit more presentable, and you'll also have the ability to hang paintings, place trophies, and these are things that you'll receive as you complete quests in Toussaint, so uh, if you don't have anything yet, don't worry, just make sure you play through the expansion and come back to decorate your place. Now, once you've done the general renovation, you'll be able to finish off the indoor upgrades for Corvo Bianco. So head over to Major Domo once more and talk to him about renovating the house. You'll see several more dialogue options where you can purchase a better bed, weapon racks, armor stands, or a new guest room. The new bed costs a thousand coins and it gives you a vitality boost when you sleep. Uh, also, the new guest room allows you to invite some former friends over. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I assume it's something to do with some female companions. The additional weapon racks and armor stands cost 500 apiece, but they let you show off some of your fancy armor and weapon sets that you've collected throughout the game. Now, the outdoor renovations work fairly the same. Once you order your grindstone and armor table, you'll have two new renovation options from Major Domo. For 2,000 crowns, you can order a horse stable for Roach, which will give Roach a stamina buff after you rest in a bed. And for another 2,000, you can renovate the greenhouse and the outer garden, which lets you cultivate herbs for alchemy and armor dyes. Alright you guys, now that you know how the upgrades work, I'm just going to give you a quick little walkthrough tour of my vineyard so that you can see what a fully upgraded Corvo Bianco looks like. So, we're starting off here at the entrance to Corvo Bianco. Here's the fast travel sign. Uh, excuse me, pardon me. Down here is the vineyard itself, where I've got all my employees toiling away in the fields. And uh, you'll notice that some of the NPCs like to just chatter away and say really random stuff. Uh, it gets kind of annoying at times, to be honest, but you get used to it. Some of the things they say are pretty funny. So anyway, uh, you can see a lovely view of the Toussaint countryside, and actually the castle is off in the other direction toward Mount Gorgon. You can kind of see the top of the castle over there in the distance. And we've got peacocks! Here, little peacock, peacock. Please? Maybe? Can I? Oh, look, it worked. Okay, got him. Got him. We've got some lovely pet peacocks hanging out. They like to meow every once in a while. They're actually pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, axie them and they'll just follow you around. 
Anyway, this is like the little worker area where people like to beat rugs and turn butter and pull feathers off of birds. You know, typical village people stuff when they're not singing YMCA. Excuse me, Roach. Excuse me, pardon me. Um, one moment, technical difficulties. Alright, much better. Good to know Roach is as derpy as ever. Anyway, this is of course the horse stable that you can upgrade for Roach, and doing so can give you a stamina buff that you can only get upon resting, so I'll show you guys how to do that momentarily. Around the left corner is where you'll find your grindstone and armor table, which are the first outdoor upgrades that you can make to the vineyard. Uh, before we head inside, let's go over on the right and check out the garden. Alright, so on the left we have the greenhouse, and down below, further in the distance, is the little herb garden. So we'll go around since it loops in a circle. This is the lovely greenhouse where you can get all sorts of unique little herbs. Let me turn on the hood so you guys can see. There's winter cherry, nazari basil, and blue lotus flowers. And sometimes I like to just stand in here and take screenshots because it's just so pretty. Uh, but yeah, you can use these for alchemy and they do grow back once you pluck them uh, so you don't have to worry about them, you know, running out or anything like that. And this is the herb garden and this will have everything that you need for alchemy for the most part, you know, Han fiber, Molly arrow, there's all sorts all the way down, celandine. Uh, we got some fool's parsley leaves and wolfsbane, I believe, uh, plus some other stuff in between. And once again, these all will grow back if you if you pluck them. All right, before we go in the main house, I'll show you guys the cellar first. Um, and actually, first off, check out my lovely Naked Man statue. This was something I got for a side quest that I did in Beauclair, so make sure you guys go get your own Naked Man statue. And yes, his junk is covered with a leaf. Don't worry, you can kind of sneak a peek under there, but uh, yeah, don't tell the YouTube censors. All right, so head down into the cellar. And straight ahead, you'll see, if you haven't come down here since, you know, fighting the Bruxa, you'll notice that this wall is blocked uh, with, I think it was rubble or it was a locked door, I can't quite remember, but uh, all you have to do is ard the door and it'll open up to this little alchemy lab here where you can grab an alchemy buff off the table. I don't have the HUD on, but just trust me, that's what you can do. Uh, and yeah, I think there's some collectibles in there as well. This is just one of the little side cellar areas where you can store wine. And the same with over here, and you guys should be familiar with this area by now. This is where you can fight the Bruxa, do all of that good stuff. Other than that, there doesn't seem to be much use for this area, at least not that I've run into yet. So when you first arrive at Corvo Bianco, the main building pretty much looks like crap until you do the general renovation, and then you get this lovely little gold leaf edged building uh, with all these new renovations inside. As you enter the main house of Corvo Bianco, you're greeted by a dining table. For some reason, we have the dining table right in front of the main entrance. Uh, I've got a few armor stands here. These are actually part of the armor stand upgrade and the weapon rack upgrade. I, I didn't put any weapons here, but I put a couple on this side. It's Winter's Blade and uh, Hjalmar's Sword. On the back side, these are where the armor stands go when you do the armor stand upgrade. And these little blank spots on the wall are actually for hanging paintings, but I haven't really accumulated very many paintings. So, uh, yeah, those are going to be blank for now. This one is for a quest that you do in the main game, so I'm not going to reveal that. Actually, no, I think it's a secondary quest. Well, whatever, you guys will run into that eventually. Got my cat school gear, I've got some griffin armor. And actually, when you put the viper gear on one of the stands, it's bugged right now, and it kind of turns the viper gear like a bright red color. It doesn't look terrible, uh, but it is bugged, so just keep that in mind if you're trying to put viper gear on the stands. So Major Domo just likes to hang out over here by this secondary dining area, and you can actually play Gwent with him over and over. You can practice your Gwent skills, and you can actually uh, request certain factions to play against and uh, certain difficulties, so that's pretty nice. Good practice for the Gwent tournament. And up these stairs here is the guest bedroom. So uh, before doing the upgrade for the guest bedroom, this is pretty much just like a little sleeping bag and a bunch of broken crap all upstairs. Uh, but yeah, once you do the guest bedroom upgrade, you'll be able to have some guests over, possibly some female companions as well. Summon the bitches! Before we go in the master bedroom, we'll go over here and check out the kitchen. Uh, this is also another area where you can put 
uh, a painting, a couple weapon racks. As you can see, I've got Iris down on the bottom there, as well as a few other swords. And uh, this little shield painting here is something I got in a secondary quest. And when you go into the kitchen, there really isn't much to do in here. There wasn't even food or anything for me to loot. However, there is this little fire. Let me see if I can line up properly with it. So if you interact with the fireplace, Geralt will warm his cold little phalanges on the fire and throw some wood in there as well. Uh, unfortunately, this pot of soup or stew, whatever this is, doesn't do anything for you. I was kind of hoping it would be like Estes soup in Dark Souls, where you can replenish your health by eating it or something like that. I thought it would be a little more interactive, but alas, it is not. That's okay, though. All right, you guys, let's go into the bedroom. This is really the last area in the house, so... This is Geralt's lovely bedroom, and actually I kind of wish it was brighter in here, like maybe it, like if it had some candles in the corner that'd be nice, so I'm just gonna bust out my handy dandy torch. Hopefully I won't light anything on fire while I'm at it. Alright, so this is the bookshelf, and uh, you can grab a book off the shelf and start reading it, and when you do, it will open up the book panel and show you all of the books that you have. And uh, let me turn on the hood and show you what that does. So, once you grab a book off the shelf, you get a temporary experience boost, uh, which you can see in the upper left corner. Same thing with the bed, I'll show you guys that in a second. So, these shelves are trophy shelves. Get that torch out one more time. And you can place certain trophies on here, but this is not trophies like the kind that hang on Roach. These are specific trophies that come from quests. Uh, you can see one up there, I won't tell you what quest I got that from, but you guys can probably guess. Uh, but yeah, that's the only trophy I have so far. As soon as I get some more, I'll throw them on the shelves as well. Uh, you also have a little stash area where you can keep all of your lovely stuff. I'm such a pack rat. Alright you guys, so this is the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what happens with the bed upgrade. Okay, so when you upgrade the bed, these will all unlock. These are different buffs that you can get for resting in the bed, specifically. So all you have to do is rest for any amount of time, an hour at the very least, and you'll get all of these upgrades for the certain time that they allot for. Uh, the library is already there when you first get Corvo Bianco, so you don't have to unlock that. The alchemy lab comes from busting down that wall in the cellar. The stables are the, I think it was a thousand or two thousand dollar upgrade, I can't remember, but uh, yeah, that's for upgrading Roach's horse stable. And this is for purchasing the bed. You'll get a vitality increase upon resting. Alright, so let's go ahead and rest. Oops, there we go. And as you can see, now in the upper left corner I have a couple more buffs. Got the stamina buff for Roach and the vitality buff as well. Alright you guys, thanks for joining me on this lovely tour of Corvo Bianco, and hopefully you guys will get yours fully upgraded as well. I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with this beautiful view of the night sky in Toussaint. Uh, some of the night skies are just so breathtaking, they have so many stars! I think they like really up their star game with the Blood and Wine expansion. Uh, but yeah, it's just gorgeous. Sometimes it's just great to keep it at 8 o'clock, right at that perfect sunset time so you can look at the different colors in the sky. Alright you guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I plan to do more Witcher 3 videos very soon, so make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of my uploads. As always, thank you so much for watching, stay strange my loves, and until next time, this is Strangelove and Geralt signing out.